Wow. The heat in this place, Canada, make you or burn you. This is a hot zone. Congratulations, Koza. Uh, it is amazing the sort of revolution that takes place outside the realms of uh, the civil service, the public service, the outer space. A lot of revolution goes on in houses like this. And sometimes all of us who are in government need to find time to come out and spend time with you and, and get encouraged by the burst of energy that you see. Let, let me say that I'm, I'm very privileged and honored uh, to have come here today. I'm a firm believer in, in, in one's capacity. I'm a firm believer in God's faith in people and God's direction to people. I'm a firm believer in a destinial track of movement. And I think that there's a reason why everybody's brought on earth. The only problem is sometimes we do not pursue those reasons, we do not pursue those directions. I have pursued mine and I will keep pursuing it. I'm a child of... Um, I'm a child of miracles who absolutely believes that a lot of things that happen in my life happen in my life because of the fact that God has so decreed. And so I, I don't really bother. I, I don't put a lot of energy around things. Things happen. And, and, and the awesome power of God is unbelievable. You know, when I was um, finishing secondary school, uh, I was probably about six months to, to work and I was doing very well but not really excited about our outstanding performances, just having fun. And one of my teachers, just like your pastor said, called me outside and said, you know, you have the capacity to be the very best amongst your peers, but you just don't push yourself. And so I left him that day, and for six months I pushed myself, and I, I had one of the best results in the country. And once that happened, I realized the capacity inherent in me to do well. And that capacity is in everybody. And so I, I went to Ife to try and read medicine. I was there for two weeks, and then I got an admission to read law. Uh, and my father drove all the way uh, to Ife to meet me. And he said to me, you know, why do you want to go to the university? I said, my ambition is to be a doctor. And he said, why are you taking the line of what he called the line of least resistance? And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, if you want to be a doctor, why, do you just, why don't you just go and read a PhD? Get to the very top. Don't just take an easy doctor and be a medical doctor. But I was talking to a little boy, and that got me. And so I packed my bag, left the school of medicine, and went to read law. And um, got in there, got a scholarship, and became the best student. I had a first class in, in that institution. And then I left from there to, uh, to the law school. Um, and in the law school, uh, I think, just like the pastor said, people encourage you. And all of my colleagues came and said, you know, what? we are all here representing our institutions. If you brought a first class from Soka, you better make it work here in the law school where everybody's gathered. Uh, and so that, that simply just encouraged me. Not my battle, but their own battle. Uh, and and, and I, at the end of the day, God was faithful and I made a first class in the law school. Yeah. And, and, and getting to Harvard, my... my my, my feeling as soon as I got into Harvard was, Harvard was a very unique institution, uh, the biggest in the world. And uh, basically to get into Harvard, you either had to have a two or a first class for your uh, primary institution. So we had 150 students reading uh, master's in law, that I was, I was in a joint master's in law and joint MBA. And in those classes, uh, uh, you had to be the very top. I know the first day I tried to ask a question in class, the, the professor said to me, are you sure you're really attuned to the American system to ask questions? And that even offended me the more. <laughs> and so I said, no, this thing has to work. So something again encouraged me. At the end of our master's program, I was the best student, got a Harvard scholarship. <laughs> and, and I went to do my doctorate. And, uh, and for the doctorate, I, I set what is still a Harvard record today of completing a doctoral program in one and a half years. You know. But, but at every, every bit of this, this is not about celebration of success. The, the reality is that I always believed at every given time that God had me for a purpose and that I needed to go somewhere and I needed to prove something. And as I've taken on, I mean, I mean the call to come to service in the public service for me uh, is very unique. I was vice president of uh, ExxonMobil West uh, Africa uh, and I enjoyed my job. 
I was superintending over 19 countries, uh, turning them around, and I was suddenly called to, to serve. I am directed by the voice of God. Probably not called in the way your pastor is called. I'm not gifted that way. But, but I listen to reason. And, and I believe that this country needs help. I believe that this country, it is about time we begin to perform for the young and upcoming. I, I, be, I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe that the sheer capacity of this country is unimaginable. I do not know of any country in the world with our population, our resource, our intellect, you know, our flamboyance, you know, our camaraderie, our family nexus, everything is together. The only thing that is not together is leadership. And in God's name, we are bound to change that. And what I've said to my colleagues is that in every little space that you have, and in my own case, petroleum, you have to make an absolute change. And so I'm not worried about price of oil. It can be $5 for all I care. I'm worried about the direction of the industry. I'm worried about changing things the way they've never done before. I'm worried about creating opportunities that exist. I'm worried about imploding the standards of delivery. I'm worried about encouraging opportunities in the sector. I'm worried about opening up, opening up those opportunities that have existed for years that people locked in together. I'm worried about changing institutions. I'm worried about changing minds. I'm worried about changing the future. I'm worried about changing Nigeria. I'm worried about serving and closing and living at the right time with a sense of history. I thank you very much for having me here. God bless you all.